yeah, we got the car delivered to us the Saturday before uh, Sebring last year. And we ran the race and qualifying, we were five seconds off the pole. So we knew we had a lot of work to do, and, and the car felt good, but it just wasn't fast. And we worked so hard, and I, I, I said this before, and I keep repeating, this team has so much heart. We're the little privateer working so hard um, and not quitting. Every person that team's worked so hard. I know you hear that story so many times, but it really, when you look at it, we've taken a year and a half to get to where we are today. Absolutely wonderful. Wow. Um, we didn't have the resources of the factory or the, the, the funding or the, the uh, technology, and so we just had to have some smart folks and just kind of, we all put our heads together and worked really hard at it. Pretty emotional, really. Um, the whole team is very emotional. Well, in the off season, we worked really hard on a lot of things. Uh, went and tested the Sebring probably 10 days in January and continued doing some more development. Went back for the race, and we were, uh, I forget what, less than two seconds, about a second and a half off the pole, which was huge for our we were a year before, almost five seconds off. Tell us about this Robertson Racing 4 GT. It's really coming on leaps and bounds. You, you've been fast uh, all the way through the season, David, and getting faster still. We've done it in efficient ways and smart ways, and it continues to get better. The car's really, really good. We've come a long way from Seaford, I'll tell you that. We did, came in, we were quickest at that time, and then sitting there, that's when the, uh, I think we moved back to third place or wherever it was. For a while, Murray was on the pole. The Corvette just took it away from him, but by less than a hundredth of a second, it's unreal. So uh, I think Greg Kramer came up and gave me a thumbs up, and I said, I I'm going back out, because for us, it'd be great to be in the top three, but it's not like the pole. I think there may be still a little bit left in this. Chatting with Dave Robertson quickly, and he said a brilliant lap by David, but David thinks there might be more in it. He's just giving it a little breather to cool the tires off. We're going to see that Pilate Ford go back out and take a run at this. And John, when I had talked to David a little bit earlier this morning, he had told me, he said, you know, we tested, able to turn 120, high 120s here, and if we can get back to that setup, we're going to be golden. Boy, did they. Make sure I got it out of there, and I'm so proud of the team. Everybody's got, we've got such a big heart. We're a little private team running against these giant manufacturers, and you know all the credit to them. They work hard, put a lot of resources into it, but we got heart, so much heart, and we've been working so hard at it. It's not just, I mean, a pole is wonderful. I don't want to make light of that, but it's not just a spectacular pole. It's it's something way more than that for the, the amount of work we've here, but also the history of the Ford GT. We showed the man how to do it, didn't we? That car looked fantastic on that track yesterday. Proud moment, beautiful car, and let's go to Laguna and see what we can do with it in Laguna. I have to say, this is very much one of the top top emotional feelings for me. It's, it's, a, it's a monumental moment because of the history of what it, what it was and where, it, where it's gone to. And, you know, here we are repeating history to some degree. Boy, it sure is nice to be where we're at right now.